We have a new player atop Mel Kuyper's big board on ESPN.com. Former LSU cornerback Patrick Peterson coming off a very impressive NFL combine showing that included that. 4.34 in the 40. Has now displaced former Auburn D tackle Nick Fairley. At least for the moment. Let's take a look at the top 10 of said biggest O boards. Again, Peterson now in the catbird seat. You also see a change among the quarterbacks there. Cam Newton had been uh, climbing, but post combine, former Missouri quarterback Blaine Gabbert now in the eighth spot. Cam Newton sitting at number 10. To discuss this all, we're now joined by our Mel Kuyper. And Mel, do not be shy, big fella. Why did you move Patrick Peterson all the way up to number one? I think a couple of things. First of all, underclassmen, Josh, you don't get the accurate measurables till the combine. For Patrick Peterson, you were waiting just for that. Is obviously his performance at LSU was top notch. Kid at six foot and change, 219 pounds. You look about a 4'3, 4'40, 219 pounds. Deion Sanders came out in 1989, 5'11 and a half, 188 pounds. That's roughly 30 pounds heavier. Peterson over Deion. Rod Woodson in 1989, he ran a 42940. Deion a 427. Well, Woodson was six foot 195. So you're talking about about a 20, 25 pound difference there. So big kid, long, athletic, unbelievable ball skills, great production too in the return game, which is an added bonus with Patrick Peterson, Josh. Meanwhile, uh, Mel to the quarterbacks now. Blaine Gabbert, number eight. Cam Newton at number 10. Following uh, that workout largely for the media, you really like Newton. He, you had him as a real climber, but why now has Gabbert supplanted Newton on that, on that top 10? couple of reasons, Josh. First of all, Blaine Gabbert did work out in terms of that showing athleticism and that size, which is very imposing, mobility, speed, quickness, and the interview process where you show that football acumen, that character, that face of the organization that you want your quarterback to be moving forward. So Blaine Gabbert, while he didn't throw, moved up and I think firmly established himself right now as the top quarterback in this draft. Cam Newton needs to make amends during his pro day, but certainly for Blaine Gabbert, I think you could make an argument. He's in the mix for the number one pick overall. When you hear Comparisons to a, a more athletic Drew Bledsoe. Certainly, uh, Blaine Gabbard has done a lot, even though he didn't throw. He has a good pro day, Josh. He is moving up. I have a number eight right now on the big board. He could maybe be his number five or number six. But I think the number one pick overall spot can be very interesting to see what Carolina does. And Blaine Gabbard certainly now has put himself in a position to be at least in that discussion. Well, if the Panthers do look to go defense and they were, well, using your board, they might go Patrick Peterson. But after Peterson, it's Daquan Bowers of Clemson, Nick Fairley of Auburn, Bam is Marcel Darius. They've all been talked about as potential number one overall picks. After then, what we saw at right. Indy with each of these guys, who's got the best? Best chance of going in that spot. Well, first of all, cornerback is a need for Carolina, but defensive tackle a bigger need. So we would think about Nick Fairley. You would think about Narcel Darius. Bowers coming off the injury, defensive end, not as big a need. And certainly Blaine Gabbard, if they feel like Jimmy Clausen isn't the right guy moving forward. Remember, a new regime there in terms of the coaching staff in Carolina. They could go that direction. But I would think right now, Peterson, at least now, with that 3 4, three, four 219 pounds, working in conjunction with that great career at LSU in the SEC, Tremendous corner, potentially a shutdown guy with return skills, Josh. Patrick Peterson is certainly in the mix because cornerback is a neat area for the Carolina Panthers.